Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Snake's Revenge. In the last part, we beat up some... thing that I can't remember off the top of my head. And now we're getting a call. I've been captured in the transport train, but I've set up the transmitter. Okay then, you were captured earlier. We're still trying to rescue you here, man, so you don't need to tell us you were captured. Either way, we want to enter the train on the left. The train is beginning to move! Hmm. Okay, really, dude? There is no trap on the train. <coughs> Bullshit! What? What? I didn't say anything. What are you talking about? Nah, nah, man. John, you liar. Electric floors, which are actually really annoying to dodge. Uh, thankfully, there is a pattern to them, so you can eventually figure out what exactly to do. But, yeah, it's around this point that you'll realize that this game is kind of harder than the originals. In fact, I think out of the original Metal Gear duology, I suppose, for the NES and MSX, I think this is the hardest one. Uh, you will be using a decent amount of rations through this one. I'm in the third car. There are no enemies here. You know, based on the fact you either didn't miss that trap or you were just plain lying, I'm not sure I believe you without there not being any enemies in the third car. Also, you can come in here for some, uh, grenades. Uh, now the first floor in this room, uh, uh, first door, rather, leads to a room that just has a really annoying enemy in it, so don't even go in there. Also, hug the north wall here for this ammunition. Why? Our good old friend pitfalls are back, and they open really fast this time. Thankfully, though... Well, actually, no, not thankfully. Uh, there- I don't think there is a trick to make you not able to skip them this time, so that's just annoying. Either way, we want to head up into the third car. And in this room, we got an X-ray camera. Or was this the fourth car? I lose count of these pretty quickly. This is car number four. Uh, keep in mind the previous car I was in, the final room that got me into the coupling room between this car and the last. Wait, no, never mind. I'm confused. Too many trains look the same. Keep in mind that room for later. I'll be cutting back to it. Ah! Because we couldn't enter that door yet. And good lord, I'm surprised I managed to get through here only getting hit that once. Also, hey look! Differently designed guards! Yeah, that's one thing I actually like about this game compared to Metal Gear 1 on the NES and MSX. Guards actually look different the farther you, uh, the different areas you go into. Jump off the coupler between cars when the train stops. By the way, I should mention, uh, when the train is moving, you might have noticed the coupler rooms, uh, how they were swiveling. That's like the bridges back in Metal Gear 1, both versions. If you fall off, it's into death. Hug the southern wall here, because there's another pitfall in this room for key card number four. Though, uh, one thing I actually have to say, thinking about it, uh, Metal Gear 2, uh, no, Snake's Revenge, rather, uh, has probably some of the best environment variety between the original Metal Gears. Because Metal Gear 1 on both NES and MSX, it was pretty much all the same stuff throughout. Don't shoot! I don't know anything! I don't believe you. Truth gas! Away! Don't shoot! I don't know anything! Then how low ranked are you? I'm not sure if that was a glitch or something I forgot to translate there, like they accidentally pasted the line twice in. But he tells you nothing new, I'm not even sure if that counts towards your ranking. So that's kind of stupid. Either way, here I'm, I am forgetting which key card got me into this room. And now we're back in the previous train car like I said we would. Now key card 4, we can enter here. Hey, there's John. Quickly, release my rope. Be careful, by the way. Pitfall right there. And also be careful because you don't want to be at low health here. I'll just say that much. And, uh, get either grenades or the remote control missile- OUT! I am not John Turner. I'm a spy. I'm shocked you got so far. Now prepare to die! The spy here is one of the most guy dang it bosses, because if you're at one health, he kills you! Like, if you're two health, he kills you. Ways you can go about this fight is that first off, he lays claymores and explodes them. Uh, depending on where you are in relation to them. Dodging them is kind of tricky, so be careful. 
You can either throw grenades at his face from right next to the pitfall, or go the remote controlled missile strategy, which is much more preferable. Each one of those claymores does about two or three damage, I forget how much, but either way, you're gonna wanna be prepared. Because, honestly, he is the hardest boss probably in the game that I can remember off the top of my head. A lot of the bosses in this game don't really leave much of an impression, though, so there's probably a reason for that. And for being him, we get... Power... Uh, powered armor. I was about to say powerized armor. Now, you might think that's like the body armor from the original Metal Gear that doubles your defense. No, it is for something else entirely. The train seems to have stopped. And like the person our war we rescued earlier said, we can now jump off of the train now that it's stopped. So let's do that because I don't want to be here anymore, even though I really like the music here. Wow, it's eerily quiet. Oh, hello there, transceiver. Sorry about this late communication. The military operation is a go- What military operate? Uh, then again, I suppose to destroy the newer Metal Gear, but... Huh. Either way, there's some items you can get right off the bat here, though they're not necessary because it's just refill stuff. And here you can refill your plastic explosives, which you're probably going to need to do for this upcoming section. And if you go up here and into that door up there, as we shall see momentarily, you can get some oxygen tanks. Though I'm already maxed out, so I don't know why I try to go for more. Though I suppose at the end of the part I am another rank higher, so you could feasibly uh, come back here. Spoiler alert, we're going to rank up later this part. Not that it really matters in a game with basically no real plot. Well, they try to say they have a plot, but it really doesn't. Anyway, see that boulder there? I know, that, that, that looks more like something you could bomb, but no, it's actually a boulder. That's what you need the power armor for. You hug up against it, and eventually it'll start being pushed. And you're gonna want your plastic explosives out, because a lot of the areas in this... A uh, lot of the areas in these walls. Walls in these areas are... Destructible with the plastic explosive. Be careful with your timing, though, because the moment you do that, the alarm is triggered. So... You need to be really good at what you're doing here, otherwise you could get raided pretty easily. Thankfully, in rooms where there are boulders, I don't think soldiers can spawn. And up here we get another prisoner of war. Thanks for your help! No, I don't think I really mentioned it at this point, but I love the uh, alert theme in this game. It's so catchy. Yes, walk out in the straight line. <laughs> yes, fall to me. And we immediately need to alert them again, because the only way out of here is through this wall. And we need to do the same thing in this room. Uh, on the top right wall right there. Uh, heading to the right, that is. This vertical one. Ignore them as much as you can, because they will pretty much destroy you. Thankfully, they can't spawn on rooms with uh, boulders, as I said before. I'm guessing that was uh, intentional, just due to the fact that it takes long to push a boulder. And we want to head north, because up here we get... A telescope. The, 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 those are binoculars. Um, snake. You all right there, buddy? You're getting the names of things wrong. Either way, we want to push the lower boulder to the right so we can head south first. So let's do that. Ah, Chris Redfield before Chris Redfield. And now we're back on this screen, but we can actually head to the right now with car two. Four. Get this. A prisoner of war. Thanks for your help. And now we're rank four, so we now even have more life and more ammo capacity. Pretty decent amount, too. But now we want to head into this room. I hated this room my first playthrough because I immediately walked down to this hole and lost like a good hour of progress. Well, mind you, I forget where the continue starts you off at in this game. It's been a while since I died. Either way, the moving platforms in that room are fairly simple. Just don't fall off, otherwise it's instant death. And we want to come up here for... A shotgun! I'd find that clip of Resident Evil 1 with the I got a shotgun thing, but... I actually had trouble looking for that even when I did Resident Evil. In fact, there's a reason it didn't show up. I don't know why I had so much trouble looking for it, but I did. No, I gotta say, though, the alert music makes doing stuff like this really, really cool sounding. When it's really kind of boring. Though I have to wonder, how are these things floating? Are we supposed to be, like, pallets on oil or something? I don't know. 
And here I am forgetting what I wanted to do. That happens a lot. Anyway, in this room, we want to blow up the vertical walls because that's how we get to the south. Also, what is that guard doing behind this wall here? There's no way out for him. He's literally just trapped in a walled off area. Is that solitary or something? Why'd they give him a gun for suicide? That's actually kind of morbid and would make sense given the Metal Gear franchise universe. Well, I'd say that, but this isn't canon. Womp womp. Okay, and they're a team called Optic Lens. The binoculars, the binoculars have three names. That's stupid. Either way, uh, in this room, we want to head into the door on the left. There's, uh, we can't enter, well, no, we can't op uh, open the door on the right yet. And you, can get, and you can restock your claymores in here if you need them. I don't, but you might. And now I want to go back out here, and you might be wondering where do we go from here. See those sandbags in the top right? Blow them up. In whatever way you see fit. I prefer to use plastic explosives because I have so many of them. But if you want to blow them up with an over-the-top missile, go right ahead. If only you could do that in Metal Gear 5. Because that would make some things enormously easier. But no, somehow not even a tank shell can blow them up. Either way, the alert immediately gets cancelled because we're in a side-scrolling section. And this is the one where I really recommend you start crawling on the ground to avoid enemy sight because a lot of them are, as you can see here, right in front of you and will see you immediately. And yes, guards can see you through each other, so you need to be careful here. Did I just say you, you? Hmm. My mouth and the sounds it makes can fuzzle me sometimes. I say sometimes, but it's actually more like 85% of the time. That is surprisingly annoying the time what I just did there. You know, while I give all how this works from a gameplay perspective, from a realistic perspective, this makes no sense. This camera should be able to see me from the next room over because that's how cameras work. They don't just see five feet in front of them. They do have blind spots, like, you know, below and behind, but still, that's kind of stupid. Oh, I hate this room. The timing to do what I just did here is very specific. But thankfully, once you're done with that, you can leave the side-scrolling section for good with no more guards. Also, I don't think I mentioned how exactly you use your rations in side-scrolling sections. You have to press select and then scroll over to them and press A while on the pause screen. Bit of an archaic method, but it's the NES, so I can forgive it for being archaic as all hell. Great system, I love a lot of the games, but damn it all if some of the things are not convenient anymore. Like Zelda 1 as a whole. And Zelda 2 for that matter, though I actually really like Zelda 2. Either way, we want to head, get this, west. Ooh, transceiver, who we got? You can reach me at main base. I have some important information. Oh, at the main base, I accidentally made a typo of it to my own. Either way, guess who that is? That's Jennifer from the first game. Kind of like her to bring her up, isn't it? But with that, I'm going to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part four, we'll be continuing on in this second imprisonment camp. Can't. Camp. See you guys then.